Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It is your host, Alex Coons, sitting here at Hot Tongue Pizza, and we got another great episode of Pie to Pie. This one with not only a beautiful Canadian man, but a French Canadian man and his wife, Grace and Jean from Brigade Pizza. We caught up in Southern California at Hot Tongue. They were visiting family. They were so gracious to come stop by and sit down with me and we had a great conversation. We talked about some wild stuff. We talked about the government out there in Montreal and how they watch your sales like a hawk. If you think California is bad, <laughs> don't go to Montreal and try to go cash under the table if you know what I'm saying. You know who you are. We talk about VPN certification, and does it matter? What is it? Is it a marketing tool? Is it the old way, the good way, the right way? Is there a right way to make pizza? We dive into that, we talk about that a lot. I think y'all know where I stand. I'm a big believer in do whatever the fuck you want. Brigade Pizza opened in 2014. It's 10 years old and it opened as the first Neapolitan lineup concept in all of Canada. Jean and Grace are both VPN certified. Brigade Montreal opened up in downtown in 2014, and they just recently opened up a second location. We talked about them giving away free pizza during their grand opening and how crazy that was. Jean and Grace started a frozen yogurt company that was actually inspired by Yogurtland, by Pinkberry, by a trip out here they said, yo, Pinkberry, you got something going on here. They took it back to Montreal. Now it is a worldwide company. They sold that off and began their journey into pizza. We talk a little bit about those, those beginnings and, and why they chose to sell and what got them into pizza and how it got them to where they are now. It was a wonderful conversation. Grace and Jean, my first French Canadian, he was so gentle. We both went tit for tat, and it's just a great conversation. That's what conversation's about. The theologians back in the day, would they'd get full heated arguments, yelling at each other, whatnot. And then they'd hug it out. At the time of recording, Hot Tongue and Brigade are doing a collab pizza. Hot soprasada, fresh grilled pineapple, fresh jalapeno with a little zabs and a chunky sauce with a little drizzle of the hot honey. It's gonna be hot, sweet, and tantalizing, just like Brigade and Hot Tongue and this conversation. That's what's up. So that pizza is gonna be at Brigade for I believe just a few days. If you're out there in Montreal, you better run, don't walk, and get a slice of Hot Tongue and Brigade. Mm! We bring it international. We bring the people together, and I know you're gonna enjoy the story. I know you're gonna enjoy these guests because they were awesome. So long, and thanks for all the shoes. Love cats. Friday, I'm in love again. It's Friday, here's the pod. <laughs> there we go. Love you guys. Enjoy the podcast. Woo! Before we start the pod, I want to shout out our sponsor, Zabs. Zabs is incredible. Both their hot sauce sit on every table at Hot Tongue. Their St. Augustine and original are mind bending. I'm talking naturally sweet heat and their signature slow burn. They got this secret pepper from Florida called the Dateel. It is hot, it is sweet, it is perfect on pizza, on eggs, on anything. And I know that anyone who tries it is gonna love it. If you don't know about Zabs, you gotta check them out. And you know who put me on their hot honey, which I think is better than all of them? Nick Camacho. Shout out the man, the myth, and the legend for putting me on this. I didn't even like hot honey before this, but Zabs changed my mind. I wouldn't put it on every table at Hot Tongue if I didn't believe in how much it could enhance pizza. Do yourself a favor and go check out Zabs. You will not be disappointed. Anyways, I'll stop talking now. Let's get to the pod. Let's go. But that's why we're super regulated too. Like you don't have this thing yeah. where like we have this box that we have to have at the restaurant that like sends the sales to the government. <laughs> so what? Yeah, it's that's like some, it's called everything, the MVP, and it's only George, that's in some Orwellian it's, shit. It's, it's it like, is. Yeah. It is like so. And it the just real happened, mafia is the government. It happened like four <laughs> years ago. Like before that, 
no one had to do it, you know? Yeah. And so they really regulate us. Like, so that no one so it happens like it hooks up to your it hooks up to your POS system. It Correct. is, yeah. and every you have POS to system. like it registers every single sale. Like so, you can't evade taxes, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah, even right. if yeah. you're using cash, and also by yeah, law. Yeah, exactly. Because as soon as the cash register opens, it registers that. Well, I know the homies that them you know. cash sales but back, are not <laughs> are not being regulated. Oh, tons of people closed when they did that. that it was is like fucking because everyone lost their yeah. It's like. Yeah, because some people here still are cash only. And it's like, yo, if you're cash only, that is not, you're making things a little harder on yourself, but you're also making things a little easier, if you know yeah. what I'm saying. Sometimes well, you that's have the same to. thing that was yeah. happening. Yeah. So. But they even like watch, like you have to give the receipt at the end too. It's like very regulated. If I don't give the receipt oh, to gosh. the customer, I can be fine. They even send Even like, for delivery, I have the, to send them the receipt that comes out from the we had a thing printer. Where, like, the government yeah, actually yeah. sent an inspector to make a fake Uber. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They do and like stuff like this. Just to check if we. Gave the receipts. I, I think it's wow. it's hard because like, like we're really you, like that's crazy. That's a lot of money to put into something I know, like but that. But it's like, why are you doing that? I, I don't know. California like will fair. be there probably in a couple of years. California is very similar to get real regulated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quebec and California are really similar in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah, really like yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, but it's like uh, <laughs> nice. Will we've talked about the mafia? Yeah. We've <laughs> talked about the government. <laughs> You guys are fucked when you fly back in. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't think we're going back. I think we're might, might as well just move here. You to the U.S.? You start talking all this shit? I know. That's not. Okay, that's not. That was great, by the way. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't do anything. And the fact that I'm like American, Kids, it makes it That's coming home. Like, I'll take care of it. Psyops. <laughs> all right, let's get into it. Okay. Uh, you both left previous careers uh, to get into food. Uh, and you started out with the frozen yogurt concept. Uh, you sold that, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We sold, sold that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What was the conversation like getting into pizza? Like why? How? Oh, yeah. First of all, yeah. take me through the transition of even just leaving your jobs. This is close. This is 10, 11, 12 years ago. 2008. Okay. A while back. I'm not going to do the math because I can't. But uh, deciding to leave that for this frozen yogurt thing and then deciding to leave that and get into pizza. Mm -hmm. Like how did Take me step by step because sometimes it's just fun to realize that journey. 2008, I was working as the um, creative director, operation director for like a large company in Quebec. I was I was like in the multimedia field at the time or doing website and stuff like this. Grace was in fashion design and uh, I got laid off in 2008. You know, they laid off a bunch of people. I went with it. And so we got like a six months where we we're like, ah, what are we going to do with it? And then we traveled back here where Grace is from in Los Angeles. And uh, we took six months off here. And over six months, we we're like, you know, should I go back and finding a job, you know, in, in my field and her as well. And we came at the time where Pinkberry was kind of growing, like, like as in growing, like exploding. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a we, huge. Yeah. So somebody thing. told us, hey, go check it out. It's pretty good. So we went there and then we just. I don't know why there's a lot of things that happened in my life that I don't really understand why, but like, cause I was not in the food guy. I, I could barely cook rice and stuff. You know, I was, I had no idea about food. It was rice not my thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I would make it stick. It was like, you know, it was pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, I would eat like my vegetable from a can, you know, kind of thing. So, and, Respect. and so we're starting that far. So, and, and for some reason we both fell in love with that thing. And I think we're both like very passionate for a concept. We're I think obsessive. I am very passionate for concept more more than the food i love concept like ideas building it. buildings yeah. like coming out with new menus yes. new thing we can do bring new stuff you know up to montreal that people have never seen um and and that pinkberry thing was like the element that just started it all and we just went back home we we're like we got to do a frozen yogurt store and yogurtland came up and we we're like wow that's the pinkberry looked even more fun so we just like we bought old used machine uh and like for I think it was like I think we 35 it for 30 or 50 grand. grand. <laughs> we opened the, the first, the first, uh, the first store, the first Yay Yogurt. It was called Yay Yogurt uh, from Grace's name. And, um, and uh, yeah, so then from there, we just like, uh, we started, uh, we, we opened the first one and then we, we, we got two partners that wanted to get involved that were more silent partner. And, uh, and then we opened a bunch of them. We started franchising, opened them all over in uh, Nouveau Scotia, Quebec, Ontario. Uh, there was one in Boston too. Boston. At one point, yeah. Yeah. 
And then we sold them the remaining part about four years later in 2012. We sold all the remaining part to them, the two partner. And they went on to open in Lebanon and China, Shanghai, like oh. a bunch of places. Yeah. And, um, and it's still existing today. It's still operating. And, and, uh, and that's it. So from there, after we sold it in 2012, it was December 2012, almost 2013, we had to do something else. Then, you know, no we were like, am I going back to like multimedia, working in websites and stuff, like fashion? It was kind of like... We weren't, we weren't sure if, because it's already been five years of the market, right? So we decided kind of like come back here again and then take a break. And, uh, and this is where we, at this point we were playing between, before we came here, we we're playing between pizza and burger. We weren't sure if we wanted, which one we wanted to do. We felt like it was like a step higher because developing a full on kitchen and stuff, it's not something we're used to making yogurt and stuff that works, but like it was kind of another level, you know, like we're kind of graduating. And pizzas and burger were, I feel like, something we could tackle where they had some passion into it we could we can put in, you know. Like if you go back to the yogurt, we used to put real yogurt in it. We were making our own flavor with real blueberries. You know, we're really passionate. We want to make the best product out there and best packaging and best everything that we can with our knowledge and talents we have. <laughs> so the burger and, and the pizza was the two thing that to me was like, you can do a smash burger, you can do a burger with a great sauce, you know, the buns is different. There's so many little tiny elements that you can really focus and get really a good burger. And same thing with the pizza. You can really play with your yeast, your dough. Um, so there's so many things you can do with that. So I think those things really like focused us. And eventually we were, downtown LA and then we walk by uh, Westwood we're in Westwood we're walking by there and we came across the window we looked inside it was like two oven and the wall over there and the chandelier and it looked really beautiful and we started googling it and it was like uh, 800 degree that was opening there mm -hmm. the chef Caron that was opening uh, his first restaurant there and and then we were like how oh, maybe we could do that it, it sounds like a good concept you know like i had this this whole concept idea coming from the yogurt where people make their own toppings put their own toppings that are yogurt to somebody who makes their own pizza for us it felt natural they're just going to line up the same way we're used to it doesn't bring us to anywhere else we don't know how to do service table uh we're not used to it so like that was really fitting into our, our core so we went along with it and uh and and we went we started researching about the pizza industries and figuring out well the pizza nut industry but more the pizza dough how to make the pizzas and everything and we didn't know how so we built a wood oven. we actually had a wood oven built in our backyard in february three feet of snow we're like making pizza dough and we're going out on the peel with our big winter boots in the backyard tossing in the oven you know it takes like six hours to get the oven hot because it's too cold you know and this is where like it was struggle, but it was fun. We really liked it, you know? And there was a lot, there was not that much information at the time. You couldn't go on YouTube. You would have to like look at the Antonio Mangetti uh, like videos and they're trying to like Jimmy Nani, whatever. Like, the, like I, I looked at I looked them all and just like rewind, try to see what flour he's using. Is he making a starter? How much water he's using, hydration. So you had to figure out everything. It was kind of hard. And we figured out that it was the Veda Pizza Napolitan Association here. Um, and they were giving certification. So we were like, you know, if we're starting a restaurant, might as well just go there, get a kickstart, and they'll, you know, teach us how to do the dough and everything. And that's what we did. Uh, we did the little certification, Veda uh, Pizza Napolitana here in uh, Marina del Rey, they were before. And went back home and we were on our way to start our lineup concept already. But then we realized that we wanted to make again, something very good. We wanted to make a real thing. You don't want to make a real Neapolitan pizza, but then lineup concept, which at the time here, there were a blaze coming up, Pyology, where we're Gazavin, they were not like Neapolitan pizza. It was like more like a subway kind of like really quick, but we wanted to, we were passionate. We wanted to make a good pizza. We went on to like, I was <laughs> I remember like, I was making like, like yeast with like grapes at home, you know, like to do my own starter. Mm -hmm. And it was like, we went really far with pineapples and we tried different things. We oh, weren't wow. really deep. We were like rising our dough, like, like no fridge. I was like, I'm not touching a fridge. My dough's out, you know, like I was really trying to be as pure as I thought I could be with the small knowledge I had back then. And over time I realized that, you know, like that's not what it was. It's not just one recipe that you get from a VPN. It's not just like, reading on a book that 300 years ago didn't have fridge and they're like, you know, it's, it's more than that. You have to make it something that 
that you like, you know, that's something that fits your profile, um, fit the profile of your customer as well. So we tweaked it over time. So we went from like uh, this whole process of learning how to make the dough to with the lineup. And now we have this like things that's like a lineup concept, like Pology, but we, we like with a much better pizza wood oven and everything, training the staff how to turn a pizza. Super busy, was working extremely well. And, uh, and that was 10 years ago. And then, and then from there, um, or eventually after the pandemic, right? We, we had the pandemic uh, that hits us pretty bad downtown. We're downtown Montreal. So like all the office went empty. Everybody went, went home. And we kind of like switched the concept after the pandemic to a sit down restaurant. Like we felt like we know we could go down that route. It was really busy already. We already had our clientele. Everything was working well. And we felt like to give honor to the concept of Neapolitan pizza, it would be better at that point instead of having people lining up the counter with the whole, you know, the, the, the whole mentality we had back then of lining up, pointing at foods and stuff like this. You know, yeah. it felt a little bit uncomfortable, but we all had our mask and plexiglass everywhere. Yeah. So we felt like it was a good idea to switch to the table service after the pandemic. And, and this is where we're at. We just opened our, our first one, uh, our second one. Uh, it's been 10 years, but we opened our second one uh, in Boucherville last September. And, uh, and that's it. And now we're looking to open more uh, outside of Montreal, obviously, not, not, not downtown. So Why did you decide to sell off the yogurt? Well, well we, we've already been there in four years into the, into the whole uh, yogurt business, right? So it was like Big Berry was like the tipping point and everything was doing well. And we had partner. And at some point, you got to part away, right? It's like the relationship and the partnership. So you were, is the, you were trying to get out of a partnership? Not, well, I think it, it was both ways. I don't think it was one way or the other. I Did don't think we were mad visions? at each other. Yeah. It's just like they were in it for the money, for the, for, for the business itself. We were in it at first. We were not even sure why it was successful. We were both really happy. But at some point, it was just like, I felt like we had to do something else. I think they wanted to have more too. Uh, so it was just working really well. We were still in good relationship after that. It was no like big drama. We didn't like tear each other shirts. It was yeah. a pretty smooth transition. Yeah. We got a check. We were really happy with that. It allowed yeah. us to keep going with, uh, you know, Brigade, yeah. which made us, you know, uh, happy as well yeah so no i think it was just like you know there's like i said there's a tipping point at, at some point where you're like you know it's been four years in that concept i see it in la should we keep doing this should we move on i think they're really happy with it they'd like to expand i mean why not i think it's not a bad idea right so, yeah and it gives it, it kind of like gave it's like it's like going to university really it's like straight up from primary school to university you're like Ugh. so you're learning a lot of things and that was the business side of it is part of the thing you learn well you marketed brigade as the first neapolitan pizzeria lineup. In, in lineup in canada lineup yeah. lineup that's, yeah so that's, that's the, the big support thing. yeah okay it's in the small display as there the has there yeah in the small <laughs> there's a lineup. little asterisk interesting well done well done because i don't even think i read that i was like holy shit this is the first neapolitan See, I didn't know, restaurant in i didn't canada. think it was still on a website <laughs> well it's definitely still yeah, there i'm gonna talk to the guy that's a website uh it it's might me. not be on the website <laughs> i i I, re I like go i go read everywhere okay one sec i gotta turn off my <laughs> bench full timer the joys of doing a podcast while you're also opening up a business. So, uh, so it was it was the first um, lineup. Is there more now? Have people? Have oh other yeah, other well, people taking that concept. Yeah, yeah. Blaze came to. There was no Blaze or Mod or no, any of that. No, 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 okay. no, no. There was not none. Of, it was 2013. It was actually starting here. Uh, like 800 degree just opened. And I've never been to an 800 degrees. Is that what they do? Was it a lineup situation? Yeah, it was, okay. they, they really started this whole, they were there before okay. the Blaze, I believe. Mm -hmm. Blaze came after that. Blaze yeah, made a version of it that was- Blaze though, Neapolitan pizza. No, it's not. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Just they, the that, that was a different, even the 800 degree, they were not calling themselves Neapolitan pizza at the time. It was a wood fire pizza. I don't think they were calling each other. I think themselves. they were. Oh, uh, they were? Yeah. Oh, uh, maybe they were. Maybe they were. But they were low temp. It was not like a- Was the VPN thing for you- more of like a, a way to learn or was it important for you both to get it VPN was, certified? Yeah. It was just a way to learn and okay. it become, I think it becomes, well, I think it's not become, it is like a big marketing things more than anything else. Cause the regular bearers is going to hear a VPN and be like, Whoa, that must be a good pizza. 
It's yeah. like, oh, it's fire. It's with fire. It's going to be good. Right. So it, it, like there's so much more that goes behind the hood that you realize only later. So for us, it was not marketing. It was more like we need to know how to make those dough. And the first batch of dough we made. And like I said, back in the time in YouTube, there was that much. Yeah. Most of the video, the video were in Italian and they were hard to find. And like there was really, really little details. People were not sharing anything online. There was no recipe of like so-and-so you know like no one was sharing their recipe so even if you ask somebody the door was shut already they wouldn't tell you how much water what flour they're using nothing and well, that's changed quite a bit a lot a yeah. lot even flour when we started we only had caputo and it was only one provider of caputo and i you know that that's all there was there was no other brand uh so yeah so so learning the there was so much to learn i remember like i didn't even know how to cook sausage in the oven like I was asking Jose, at like uh, the, the VPN uh, plays there with Pepe, they have a crew there that did the thing. And I was asking him, how do you cook sausage in an oven? Like, I didn't even know nothing. So we were starting from far, right? Mm -hmm. But then we I bought, like everybody else, I suppose in the industry, I bought all the books, you know, started doing a lot of tests, went really far. Then I went back in the middle. Then I tried to figure out like, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, still today, I like we. I think we found the perfect way for us to have our own kind of like uh, flavor dough. Um, how do you call it? Signature, I suppose. Profile. Call it. Profile. Profile. Like we don't have to go because there's so much component that comes into this. You know, the employee making the dough that you can do polish at home. You can do starter at home. You can do like if you're only there every day and you make your own dough, you can do a lot of things if you want to be fancy. Now, at the end of the day, does that really translate into a profile that people are really going to be like, whoa, that is like that dough is totally because that guy is making it every morning and he's using that starter that he brought back from Europe, you know, and like, I, I don't really believe. And then the, the thing you brought back from Europe over time anyway, the starter changes. The, uh, like, I, I, I think it's too much at some point. And it's not feasible to maintain those kind of standard in the restaurants. It's not, it's not worth to do. How do I say that? It's like, it's like there, there's, there's certain things that like when you start going down into the, into the flour and the, the way that things taste, like you have the cold fermentation, you have the warm fermentation, and they're both going to develop different kind of bacteria. Those both bacteria are going to develop a better profile of, of taste. That's one reality. So you have a better tasting pizza, depending on the salt you put in there, what kind of yeast you're using, how you're fermenting it, how long you're fermenting it in bulk, directo, you know, and directo and fridge, non-fridge. There's a lot of things you can play with to yeah. change your flavor. How long you're keeping it? Are you doing sourdough? Are you stopping it just before it becomes sourdough? And so all of these have a lot of things. Then you have this world where on Instagram, everybody follow one person and they say, well, you know, Polish is the best thing and it gives you a big structure crumbs and a Botox pizza. And like, no, everybody's doing Botox pizza. And you're like, oh, I don't know if it's really worth it, right? Yeah. And the customers are reading this and they're looking online. They're like, hey, you know, like, look at those big lips. And they're like, then and, then and, and you're like, yeah, but that's not really what I want to do. So we, we, we found really what we wanted to do. We develop our own way of doing things that works really well for us. And we do have our own profiles of, of dough that really, in my opinion, is the best. Yeah. But, you know, it's like every time I go back home, I'm serious. Like every time I go back home, I taste them like, damn, we we're not wrong. It's like, this is good. This is good pizza, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm happy because I'm always worried when we're traveling, we're eating so much pizza. And we're like, that pizza was great. And we have ideas. We're like, damn, the flavor profile of the tomatoes he had there with great, the sauce, the cheese. Then you go back home, you eat yours and you're like, but that's good too. That's really good. I'm happy with that. You yeah. know, maybe we can tweak here and there. We can change that. And that we do it on ourselves anyway. We keep changing things all the time, but yeah. And, and, and I think it works, uh, I think it works really well for us. So we went from that recipe that they gave us a VPN, which is like really standard, you know, one kilo for this amount of yeast, this amount yeah. of this, that rises within six hours to something that's like double fermentation with cold heat, uh, over three days fermentation, like, you know, so yeah, it works well for us. Yeah. That worked well for you yeah. to get where you're at yeah. now. Yeah. And, and I don't think we're there yet because we're still working on, should we get something more crispy, you know, a little more crunchy on top? It's it's not fully Neapolitan. Neapolitan is really soft. So we're struggling still with what we'd like to be versus 
what the world's expecting us to be versus what it should be. Yeah. Like Neapolitan pizza has been around for 300 years. It's made a certain way. And I don't think there's that many places you can honestly get a real Neapolitan pizza anymore. It's, well, it's like, it's, I guess my question would be like, why does it matter? Like, why are we trying to eat something from 200 years ago? Well, it, 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 it does matter for the people of Naples. It does matter for the world. Well, it's like champagne, it's, you know, because well, it, it, you kind it, of brought up like bringing a starter from Europe and well, like all this is like kind of though is it's like the romanticism of it all Absolutely, it's like yeah. in its tradition but that is not neapolitan pizza neapolitan pizza as standard and it's very simple and it doesn't have to be fermented over 35 days it doesn't have to be this really dark black leopard skin it doesn't yeah but it's, it does have to be something else it does have followed the strict rules yeah. of neapolitan pizza which mean a certain amount of cheese certain amount of sauce a certain amount of of um uh the, the size of the pizza but it don't go as far as telling you it has to be fermented for that amount, it tells you a minimum of six hour. Yeah. Right. So they're giving you some information of what it should be. Your your water profile should not be uh, water should not be acidic. It should be around seven point two. If I remember out of like, you're saying should, but isn't it does have to? Well, following the recipe of yeah, following like the v, rules to and be that, VPN certified. Like, it, so, it, so is it the is, is the does does the is there restaurants that are VPN certified? We're like there is. Do you do you guys market as VPN certified? No, a no restaurant. No, okay. no. Well, the reason why we don't is when we started, we we did flirt with the idea of being VPN because we're brand new into it. We're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, this is a hot shit. It's so cool. We could be the first VPN. Blah blah blah. But then when we started looking into that, we couldn't because the way we make our pizzas, we have a marble counter and we make the pizza on the peel, and then we bring the peel down the, down the, the, you know, it's down like, the line. like, like, yeah. a, like yeah, yeah, an yeah. assembly line kind of thing. So when you get to the, at the end, you put it in the oven, yeah. but because it's made on the peel, that's it. You're disqualified. Yeah. So everything else you follow, but it, because it's on the peel, you disqualify. It's now, since we had a 35 square foot counter, there was no way that the guy could come pick up the peel. We could change Every our time. concept. Yeah. It was already built that way. So we couldn't change it. Our new restaurant could be, the, the old one could not. But does it even matter? But now at this point, we're like, does it really matter? Because at the end of the day, like you're sending a check, really. It's like you're paying for that certification, right? You're, you're getting something that's more of a marketing more than anything else because nothing is stopping you from following those AVPN rule, which are there for a reason. And, 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 and at some point it's like you're stamping, it's a New York style pizza, it's a, it's a Neapolitan pizza. Now you're, you're in that box and over time, over 10 years, you're like, yeah, I don't know. It's like, I think it could be like that because you have your own opinion. You have your own, you know, everybody live in different places. So we have different environment. And I think if you really want to make a really Neapolitan pizza and there is, you can, but I, I see a lot of Neapolitan pizza out there that claim to be Neapolitan pizza and like, they're not, I'm sorry. They're just not, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not cookie cutter. It's like, yeah, I guess like the conversation I'm trying to have is like, it to me is a total marketing tool. And like for somebody I know. like, I just not, didn't want to get waxed. So I didn't went there that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, yeah, now we're coming for you. VPN. <laughs> I know. Go I know. I knew you were VPN. going there. I just like, I'm not, I, I do think there is a marketing aspect. And the same way I do think like organic food is a market as a marketing aspect. They have their logo, they have their thing. It's the same thing. It's nothing more or worse. They're there to make sure that people respect the regulation because there is a regulation, but they're also there to educate people on what is Neapolitan pizza. And without them, I don't think it would have the exposure it has right now. Yeah. Right. So Pepe, Miele, and all these teams are doing that. They're going to the franchise expo, their meat, they're bringing stuff over here, they're certifying some ingredients and stuff. And it has its reason to be. Now, the world works a certain way. It's not their fault. The world work on, I want to have a label on that thing. What is this? Well, it's EVPN certified. Oh, wow. Okay, I've got to go try it. That's the marketing part of it. It's not really their fault. It's the people, the way they perceive things, right? Yeah. So if you have a vegan restaurant, it's not because, you know, it's, it's vegan. Like people who are vegan are going to come here to try to be like, oh, I want to try the vegan pizza. It's not the fault of veganism. You know, so it's the same thing with VPN. They give certification, they make money out of it. Yes, I mean, they got to get paid too, right? Yeah, it, it makes sense. Do I want to have it? I don't feel I need to. Do I, did I want it to have it back then? Absolutely. I want it to be the guy that says, hey, you know, I own a VPN. It, it comes with a certain standard. There's only a certain amount of them that are certified. Yeah. Now, at this point, when they're 
in my opinion, but that's only my opinion, when you're in AVPN, offering AVPN certification and you're certifying electric oven as AVPN, gas oven as AVPN, it's no longer purist on the sense of like, Neapolitan pizza should be cooking in a wood oven. Yeah. That's what it says. So if you're giving certification to a gas oven, Neapolitan restaurants, is that really AVPN? I mean, it's up to them to decide, right? They make the rules, but I don't know. Yeah. I I, I, At the same time, can you change the world from evolving and being like, is the quality as good as a Neapolitan pizza, even though if it's not wood, knowing that the f- taste doesn't come from the wood anyway, uh, technology has evolved a lot. Yeah. When we opened our first restaurant, the only way to cook Neapolitan pizza was a, gas, was a wood oven. It was the only one. That's why we went with it. Nowadays, gas are doing great job. The technology has evolved. There's so much more people making oven that... And, and what I see coming up the line is electric oven, which are starting to do really good too. They're not there yet and I wouldn't switch. So now they're certifying electric and gas ovens? A gas oven for sure. I think they were, I think well, they were it's, also it's kind of like electric. the Bible, you know, they're just like to, to continue to make money and for it to make sense, they, they change the rules. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. I, I, that's my, that was, that's my perspective. I, I know I don't want to like step on any toes, but I, I have no problem stepping on any toes. The, the idea of like Neapolitan pizza, I think the most exciting thing, just like the pizza that came to New York was like, you look at a place like Roberta's, they're not like VPN certified, but like, that's when it got exciting because they weren't following. Well, Neapolitan. they're not, they're not claiming to be Neapolitan either. Like Poly G is not either. And they're making Poly G is a Neapolitan like, pizza, but you would, people would go to Roberta's and they would call that Neapolitan pizza. Yeah. They, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That's like the, that's what, there's so many places that if there's leoparding and there's a wood fire oven, people just call it Neapolitan mm, pizza. Mm. And people will say, we make Neapolitan pizza. It's just not VPN certified. You know what I mean? Correct. And it's the whole thing, you know, New York style pizza, it's like, oh, this is New York style pizza. Yeah. There's no, there's no, there's no actual like committee that comes and stamps and says, yes, this is official. You make your shit with 58% hydration and all Trump's flour and you are now New York certified, but people use those, those same words to create, like, it's just a pattern. But I, I, I understand what you're saying at the same time, you can't say, oh, it's the AVPN that's doing it for money because they're not. It's the people who are associating that. And, and the, in fact, it's because they've done a good job yeah. at making the AVPN certify, certification being known to the world and then making it so an, it's like an exclusive club somehow, right? Yeah. But are they doing it for money? I don't think so because if they're doing it for money, they would be already 11,000 pizzeria and they're not, right? And certified. So, but people is the world have decided that when I see this AVPN certification, it means something, I gotta go try it. Yeah. So it's really basic. It's the same conversation we had off podcast earlier where we say, if it's a wood oven, right away, people are like, it's a wood fired pizza. And then there's a way to make really bad pizza in a wood oven. It can be really low temp, the fermentation, there's so many things you can do to make it bad. It's not because it's wood oven that it's a great pizza. Yeah. So the same thing with AVPN, over time, it doesn't mean that the people are following exactly the rules. The rules are also specific, but are also broad enough that you can, they don't tell you how much water you have to use, right? Yeah. They, you can go with more, more or less water, it's fine. The flour you choose can be also different. You can do a mix of flour with up to 30% of zero flour. You know, you don't need to use double flour, you know, that's yeah. it. You don't need to use starter. They don't They don't mention that. They, they put really broad kind of like, like it has to be fresh fiori de latte, right? Mm-hmm. It, 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 it doesn't have to be the buffalo. Yeah. Uh, no. I, 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 do, I do understand what you're saying because that's the same perspective I kind of have on this. Like, is there a... I just feel like why gate, Is it why just marketing? Is, yeah, is it, it gimmicky? It's, it's not their fault and it's not... I think it's becoming a marketing aspect, but more but because of the people looking at it. The same, like I said, the same thing as the organic product. It becomes like people are looking for the label. Mm-hmm. But like, we don't really know how it was really grown out there. We don't know if the certification is really like, do they really follow those steps? Is there a crack in between where Monsanto, or, oh, I'm gonna get whack, man, I'm gonna, I'm Damn, gonna die. Damn, now we got Monsanto. I'm, I'm well, I would, I would argue, too, if, if there's a company, <laughs> you're right though. I mean, like if you're, but if I would, I would hope that if you're paying for organic flour, organic produce, you're, get, you're getting that, but you don't, you're right, you don't know. You don't know. You know, that what, 
What? How much do they allow? It's like the recycling, yeah. which has nothing to do with it. But the recycling, oh, well, well it has something recycle. to do with it. The recycling nope. aspect is the same thing. That shit's they, all going. You to the can landfill. put everything in the blue band. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't mean it's going to be recycled. I know. You know. I know. So it has to be clean. It has to be like it's so many steps. That's a there's there's a lot of things like this that you don't really know. I wouldn't say like like I think they're doing a good job uh, at promoting the Neapolitan. I think the world is changing. I think we're all slowly right now moving away from the Neapolitan style pizza because, you know, the world, the world's changing. The Dave Portnoy of this world are, 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 are judging pizza based on certain categories. Yeah, but that guy, well, that guy only likes a certain kind of pizza. You know? But it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is because at this point, it doesn't matter who's pushing what. It's what the, 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 the way people receive the information and they're getting, like the whole world is being we're choosing what we're reading, what we're liking, and the whole industry based on what people see online. Basically, that's all it is. It's no longer what our tastes are. It's marketing, it's branding, and if Dave Portnoy has no idea what he's talking about, well, he can't say that because I over a thousand pizza now, he knows probably more than a lot of people. But if you were to say, well, that's his home taste, it's true. But then there's a lot of people out there that are gonna say, and me first, I'll be like, hey, he went to try that pizza, I gotta go try it. And that becomes like, so why do we give this man? Why do we give this man so much power? No, he doesn't have power. We, it, he does. Just, if, if you, the if world he, if is he goes that in, way. But if you if you see him and he goes and eats he has notoriety. Notoriety. Has all you said notoriety. 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 And then you, I, I speak then, but French, you yourself so would go and try that pizzeria because he went and tried it. Yeah, absolutely. I would. Yeah. I would. Yeah, yeah. But that is that because I'm looking for entertainment. He's an entertainer and he's great at it. Yeah, he's a great entertainer. The yeah. guy's amazing. He's like he carries his own company. It's like, but you have to go try it because you saw it online. And that's what I'm saying. The world is working that way now. If I come out with a pizza with stracciatella and Mike's hot honey on top, mm -hmm. online, it looks beautiful on my website. And I've talked to other people in Montreal who do the same thing. They post that online on Instagram, their sales boost just because it's beautiful. Yeah. They don't even care if it's good. They come and try it, right? Yeah. That's the way it works. Yeah, so, and, and hold on. so are we saying that no one gives a shit anymore about like f like what things taste no, it, like. I, they I are, agree. They yeah. are a bunch of sheep, and I wouldn't say a bunch of sheep, but I well, think we're all get... like this. I think we like to like people. We like to like the same thing as our neighbor. We like to make sure that we fit in that club. We don't want to be ostracized. We want to be at the same place. If everybody's making the Botox pizza, then you have to think to yourself: maybe I should start making Botox pizza because if my pizza is flat and I'm not a OG then people won't come to my pizzeria. They won't see my pizza as the real pizza. Yeah. So I got to make the same thing they see online. And then we went through that phase for almost a year or two where people were making Botox pizza with Novola, uh, Caputo, yeah, yeah, with like yeah. all these things. And they're, they're just, and when you say Botox pizza, you're just talking about a pizza with like a huge crumb. Yeah, the, you know, yeah. the crumb's yeah, yeah, huge. Yeah. And I was hot for a year or two, even in, in, in Italy, all the, you know, all the pizzas. Well, Una were, pizza in Italia or whatever, he's been doing that shit for years. Yeah, correct. So, yeah. so is that... Is that good? Is that not, I mean, there's so much more to it. This is this is the physical aspect of it, right? It's the it's the beauty of it. And I remember when I was at VPN, actually, Pepe Miele was saying like his pizza, his favorite pizza was not the one with leopard. He was like, you know, it is like the really marinara with uh, I think he likes it with um, pecorino, if I remember, or Parmigiano Reggiano, remember, something like that. But it was not like this whole leopard. And then we went through that phase where people started making Neapolitan pizza. And I think we're all in this beginning of phase where we didn't really know. We were trying things out left and right. We were looking at, 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 at uh, Roberta's apology. Uh, and they were like all these big bubble, black bubbles. Everybody started making leopard, leopard pizza. And it went insane. At, the, at some point, it was just like giant big black bubble on every pizza everywhere you went. But yeah. really, Neapolitan pizza. And wood pizza, fire ovens. There was a huge blow up here around like 2012. Like there was a, it was just like the newest shit. But real Neapolitan pizza doesn't require you to have black bubble on it. it there's a well, leoparding. You're right. I mean, maybe we're getting at the same thing, but the, it's beautiful. It's really easy to look at. It takes photos well. Like a, a nice with the black bubble. Crust yes. Is it's but that's not part of day. the VPN certification. That's not part of yeah, but you who gives having a shit about VPN certification. No, but, but that's what I'm getting. I'm getting at. Yeah. So what, what I'm getting at is like we're all following the trend. That's at, that's what's hot right now. Like everybody's putting honey everywhere right now. Right. Yeah. Until the next thing. So like I just brought in. Yeah, but honey, those, those, those leopardine, that crust tastes good and it looks good. And, and honey on pizza also 
it looks good and tastes good. So Absolutely. it's not like, yeah. it's not a thing that like, oh, I got to do this. Like it does, those, those th are characteristics of like innovation, I guess. Well, these, I, I'd say like the things that goes online usually have a reason to exist. Like the stracciatella with a honey, it's good. I'm not saying it's not good. It is good. So, but we're choosing things based on what we see online. And that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, yeah. if you go to OG pizzas in Italy and you look at their pizza, um, they don't all look that great. You're like, oh my God, they're doing pizza like that over there. It's like, this is really like, what? like they're not all of them. Uh, there's an Americanized version of the Neapolitan pizza that we have here yeah. that they don't even have over there. Yeah. Right. So is that because it's less Neapolitan, more Neapolitan? No. I mean, those ideas come from our own taste. We put things on pizza like honey and we're like, hey, you know, it tastes good. We have this huge thing in Canada about pineapple. It came from Canada. Right. So Hell like, yeah. it's like. It's like we've been living with that, with the guilt of inventing it for years. The guilt that should be that's that's prestige. Well, that's, because if you, guys, you look again, you if you look if you look online, everybody is being like, and it, it becomes a marketing tool. Where like even people who are against it, they're just using it as a marketing tool, you know. Like and that's, now Sorbio is doing it in Italy. He just did a pizza with the pineapple on it. Sorbio. That, it's to like, me, that is the dumbest shit. That and ranch. Like the fact that that's even a conversation that people, I agree. That people totally get upset agree. about it, the yeah. VPN, like whatever, you want to label something or gatekeep or like not like something. It's just like anything else in this Absolutely. world. Oh, we want the vegan meats. We want the vegan cheeses. Are people coming up to you and asking you, do you have vegan options? Do you have vegan meats? Well, guess what? A lot of them are not that good, but there is one that reigns superior and that is beehive. Everything that they make at Beehive is levels ahead of what you can get in a grocery store. Their pepperoni, their crumbled sausage, their cheeses, there is no contest. And the owner is one of the coolest people I have ever met. They make incredible products that go on your pizza and it is dope plant food. That's what they call it and that's what it is. Beehive, the best. Look no further, it's Beehive baby. Straight out of Nashville. Good people, great product. Check them out. Well, coming from the coming from uh, what we talked at the beginning, like the lineup system, that was really like pizza for all. That yeah. was our thing. You know, you like to have anchovies with uh, pineapple. Go ahead. This is your choice. Yeah, I'm not judging. I'm gonna put whatever you Did want. Did you have on pineapple? With the, you have pineapple? Yeah, we do have Hell pineapple. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we still have it. And and then can you make pineapple? See, I've, I've, I've been debating with myself because of all those conversation out there being like, oh, pineapple on pizza. And like, it just become, I obviously like most people don't care. It's just a fun thing to think, talk about now. It becomes more of the argument. It's a it marketing. Is actually, yeah. And it is more like, it's like, oh, I know. I know if I say something about pineapple, it's going to get me a couple. It's going to get me more engagement. So yeah, you there know. was pizza when we started back then, uh, when we started that were like burning us, you know, like because we were serving pineapple on our counter yeah. and they were printing little flyers that says, we'll never serve pineapple. And those pizzerias now are serving pineapple 10 years later. So it's like, it's like a gimmick though, because like know. even Prince street pizza, they, they have like a sign all that says like, we do not no, we do not sell ranch, ketchup, mayo or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like it's that. like very like, Hey, we're New York. We don't fucking do this. You know? Uh, it's a, it's a gimmick. It's yeah. a marketing tool. I think so too. Like most of, I think everything we just kind of talked about, it's a, it's a lot of marketing tools. And there's no regulation for that anyway. I mean, even in the, in the Neapolitan pizza guideline, there's no, there's nowhere on the book that it says that peach 28, do not put pineapple on pizza. You can put peach, but no pineapple. You can put pear, but no pineapple. I mean, nowhere does it say that, right? Yeah. And I've, I've, like I was saying, as like I was going there, I was like, I've been debating myself. Like, should I like at some point? I was like, maybe I should try to make it acceptable by like doing a little like a marmalade pineapple, dipping my pineapples in rums and burning it for three hours and like smoking it. Like I went through all these things. Like I'll put some pepperoni and like different kind of thing with it, and and at the end of the day, a pineapple pizza is made with ham, pineapples, and cheese. Canadian style. That's the way it is. So that's the way we have it now, Hawaiian. right? I think I might have to put that on the menu and just call it the Canadian. That that would be that would be good. Real ham, real ham, real ham. Real ham. Don't put like and bacon, bacon ham. It's called and, Canadian bacon, right? Yeah. No. No. Well, yeah. What's real? That's, what's you know real what's funny ham? is like the Canadian bacon you guys have. We don't have them back home. We have the strip bacon you know? again. Like, marketing. Yeah, probably. Probably. I don't know where it come from, but that's somebody not even was Canadian probably like, bacon. you know what sounds good. 
this is Canadian bacon. Yeah. But it's just sliced <laughs> deli meat. Sounds like a little bit. Like, yeah. Oh, this is elevated. Yeah, it's from up there. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, it's got a little you maple some, in it. Some bear on your pizza. I'm like, what's real ham? Yeah. What real, what would make it real ham? Well, no, I was, I was referring to bacon. I was confused. Like, man, oh. I, it's really just, just slice ham, okay. you know, torn a slice yeah, ham. Yeah, yeah. You, we roast our pineapple. The reason we do that is because we want to have that caramelized sweetness coming yeah. out of it. That's the only reason. And, uh, but you don't, you wouldn't have to, you, you literally can't take a can of pineapple chalk. Yeah. Like, you know, that's how it used to be made. It used to be made that way. It's like cho- cho- uh, torn uh, ham, uh, a can of uh, pineapple, open it up, the sweet one, yeah. put it on top, call it a day. Yeah. That's the way the pineapple pizza existed. It was yeah. invented that way. So now we can, like I said, we can try to make it something savory and like make it acceptable by the elites of the class of, you know, the pizza industry, but that's not what it is. Yeah. And most people just like, they don't want that. They don't need an elevated, you well, know. Well, depend if, this, if they see it on Instagram, they might. Yeah. Well, I would argue that like that you can see something on Instagram and it can get a lot of engagement, but like there's a, you're still going to go to every pizzeria and every pizzeria is top selling pizza is going to be the pepperoni. So and people, when you said that, that's exactly what I so, thought. Yeah. So like we can talk like engagement and what's hot on Instagram yeah, is true. very different in what like actually is, is selling in somebody's restaurant. You know what I mean? But like a know, stretch of Tella and honey pie <coughs> is, is going to sell, but your pepperoni pizza is going to sell it three to one. But you know what? I think I figured out this year is, and I, I know it's stupid after 10 years, but like, I've been through the whole thing, you know, trying to make some special chicken, like, you know, special pizza, trying to innovate the industry, like putting stuff on my pizza that people don't do. And then like, at the end of the day, every time I would do something like that, I would push out like a pistachio pizza or like whatever kind of pizza you're sending out. That's really nice looking. People would revert back to the pepperoni. Mm -hmm. And I think like this year I added salami to my menu which originally usually they don't put salami, but we're putting salami. It's a similar thing as a pepperoni. And I, I, I now understand that people are just comfortable with the idea of pepperoni because that's what they see forever. They know that's comfortable. They know it's going to be good. There's no doubt about it, right? Well, you get a pizza with arugula on it with lemon and a little pecorino. You've never seen that before. Right? It's, not, it's not the first choice you would make, right? So salami has the same effect. They visually look at it. I think, I think Pology has one too with salami. Uh, it kind of look like a pepperoni, right? So then they're comfortable with that. So it's visually, it's visually like, it's visually. They choose their pizza based on visual and comfort. comfort. Well, pizza is incredibly nostalgic. So people have been eating pepperoni since they were kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? They've been eating cheese pizza since they were kids. And that's usually what it goes back to. You can you change know, the cheese around. You're indoctrinated. Yeah. Very yeah, yeah. young. Yeah. And, uh, but McDonald understood that they're not changing their menu that much. You know, the, the yeah. same way I approach the pizza is that sometimes I would launch a pizza and it's just to revive. And we used to do the same thing with the yogurt back then. Always the same vanilla chocolate sells a lot when the yogurt chocolate was not great. But, you know, there's always certain flavor that sells a lot. But then you come out with that pumpkin flavor like Starbucks does that. It just revives your brand identity. People are like oh, they're doing something. I'm going to try it. They try it once and they go back to their grande pike. Yeah. You know, they go back to the regular matcha tea or something. Um, once in a blue moon, you'll get something that people are like, wow, like Stracciatella is one of those things. It becomes accepted. It becomes like something they like. They understand it's cheese, it's the same kind of thing. Um, so I would still argue that the combination of bread, sauce, and cheese, like you, you can't really, you can't, you can fuck that up, but that, that combination in itself is probably the best combination altogether. Okay. And I think that like for us, and I think we were talking about this off camera too, about like the gas and the wood and the organic versus this flour versus that flour. A, a lot of these things that we, we put on our menus or like we try to, to, to push on our customers or we get excited about is always, it always comes back to us mm-hmm. and, and being creative and like wanting to share our talent in, in, and show our work, uh, and we're or fight we're fighting against kind of like that pepperoni or that cheese pizza, even though it might be the hardest thing to fight against because it is so simple and so delicious. Yeah. Well, I I, I don't fight it because I do think that's really good and I, I I think people like it. The reason why I think I stopped doing all those research and like trying to like I'm still doing all those things, but I realize that you don't 
it's as simple as better. Like mm-hmm. I know you guys were talking about in your old podcast with, um, was it Damien? Damien, yeah. So kiss, like mm-hmm. it is. It is true. It's extremely hard to apply, and I'm having a hard time. But there's no reason to try to invent something. I think we're all chasing that big hit. You know, like oh wow, I got that pizza, and I don't know why. Wrongfully, we think that that is going to put you on the map. But it's not really. It's like it happens once in a blue moon. Like it really, like Paulie G with the Mike's Hot Honey. It started there, right? Mm-hmm. And and he was very lucky that that became. I think there's a an thing, origin story you know? of, of that actually starting at Roberta's. But f- the guy's Mike's Hot Honey. Yeah, I know. Made but it that famous. Mike, yes, was working from, at yeah, Paulie G. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So we're so we're kind of. I don't know where we're like. I think we're just want to improve things. We just want as as people. We're people pleaser in the industry. We're yeah. trying to make people happy. And we're trying to get things better all the time, like including the dough, the way we make our dough, the way we mix, like you use arm mixer, you use like, you know, there's so many components that come into this that, yeah, I think we're just like uh, trying to get something that's going to please people at the end of the day. And that's why we're trying so hard to become like making people discover new stuff, you know, yeah. Cacho Cavallo, like new cheese, like Fontina, like you're bringing like some like, mainstream cheese but then sometimes you're going to bring a cheese that people's never heard of and you're like i did a good job you know yeah. no nobody wants to buy it but if they want to bought it they've learned a little something right so i just like came out like uh, with our new menu we launched like last week there's a mortadella pistachio with uh, pesto it's not new it's been done forever right it's not new but yeah. it's new in our town in, yeah. in montreal no one's doing it so i was like let's do it so i threw some mortadella on it and now it's selling people love it it's it has the same kind of effect as stracciatella online. People look at it like oh, it's beautiful and I want to try it. And it is, it is delicious. It's really good. I was really surprised, to be honest. But it, it is very, very good. So we're making this, we're making the mortadza too, that's new on our menu. You know, mm-hmm. like this kind of like new way of doing a sandwich. If you saw that, but um, it's like a more like puffy kind puffy. of dough a little bit. And with mortadella again, it's soft. Um, so that I feel we're doing a good job because most people don't even know mortadella is. Right. So we're kind of like bringing something to the market that tastes delicious, that looks good. And people are like, hey, mortadella is actually like, it's pretty good. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I do like coming with, I, I actually, I don't like, I love bringing things in Montreal that people's never seen. This has been my thing. I love concept and I love being the first one to bring stuff to Montreal. Or if it's not the first, in the first one, um, like the Detroit, we were the first one to bring it. I think we're the f- second one in Canada. There was Descendant in Toronto, and it was us in Montreal. I think that's all. And they were the way before us. But we've been there with you for four or five years now. And at first, people had no idea what it was. You know, they were like, what is the Detroit pizza? You know, they were like, well, it's, you know, it's a thick pizza. It's got to cross the edge. It's like a grilled yeah. cheese kind of thing. And go through the whole history with the tool pans and like, you know. It's interesting. That craze has been going on for a long time. I feel like the Detroit Detroits and squares. Mm. I started making Detroits like in 2016 and to talk about like maybe familiarizing your like people or like engagement or like how people move in patterns. Like when they see that square that first time, do they go and buy it? Or do you do like, is there some education that you're like, oh that yeah, this is uh, the caramelized crust. This is a Detroit style pizza. You know, like, did it take off instantly? Because it feels like no. it's been a slow burn. Like, it took everybody wants squares yeah. now. It's squares are like, people are in Los Angeles, there's there's opening up square places left and right that are just only doing squares. I don't think you can have a business with just square, to be honest. I think it's, it's a tough sell. Just square, I feel like it's kind of hard. It's a thick pizza, it's heavy. It's like, you, you have too many for one person, not enough for two. It's kind of like in between, unless you're selling the 10 by 11 by 14, 10 by 14, something. Eight uh, by 10. I mean, I, I, would, argue, I, I would argue you can definitely, I mean, it's the concept is proven here. Like you got square pies in San Francisco, like the, you can definitely do it. People are doing it. But like, if you compare that to the round pizza market, it's barely nothing, right? Yeah, so, but what I'm saying, it's that's why I'm saying it's like, it's kind of a slow burn. Like pe- people have been doing it for a long time, you know. Isn't Little Caesars? I, yeah, Mon- Little Caesars has <laughs> been doing that for since the 90s, I you know what I'm in saying? In Montreal, we don't have like a big, as big of a market just, well, I I don't see how you could have just a, 
I don't think you can have a Detroit pizza alone in Montreal. You need to have the round pizza, you need to have the grandma style, maybe or some different kind of of, uh, of pizza. Yeah, a square pizza, and even like you, you're mentioning square pie guys. I don't I haven't seen their sales. I haven't seen their their financial their economy, but you know I've seen concept playing and not making money as well. So I, I don't know about them, but from what I know, they're pretty much the only chain that actually is making it. Yeah. Like Emily's Emily Square Pizza, they're also deeper. making burgers. There's, there's, there's yeah. D Town here who does very well. He's a, yeah. He's a, and uh, but the Sendon in Toronto, they're only one. I mean, there is market to have a pizzeria where, where it's so niche, and it's a great product. It's yeah. not like it's 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 there's nothing like that. I love it. It's not. It well, has its think, own I category feel like it, for sure. We're maybe still in the beginning of that craze, even though it's been around since like the '50s or whatever with buddies and stuff mm. in. in in uh, Detroit proper, but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the squares here, I, I almost sell more squares here than rounds on the weekend. Oh, really? I have wow. I have a shit ton proofing and the, it has like sales, our, our top selling two pizzas are our gluten-free square and our Sicilian, which are both two squares. Uh -huh. And I know like the squares at Apollonia's are like, it's like, it's a, it's a trend that is, is, is it, not, is, is still going this way. Is it because it's filling more people in the economy is guy like, you know what I'm saying? Like people are looking I mean, more square, for their box. My square maybe? is incredibly light. You okay. wouldn't, you wouldn't eat. I mean, you had the like Sicilian, thick, you've right? had the Sicilian. Yeah. It's, it's, it's thick, but I mean, like it's, it's got that caramelized bottom and like, but it fills you up more. What I'm thinking is like, you know, like Oh, you bang get, for you, your buck. Yeah, you, you got you got a, a Detroit style pizza. You can feed two people with that. Like in the Neapolitan pizza, it's a twelve inches. Yeah, yeah, it's a little yeah, stretchy. You, crush you know, that might yourself. be hungry. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe cause the economy. I'm not a specialist in it, but like maybe the economy is on a certain way that people are like for their box, they're like might as well get that. It's delicious. It fills you up. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, I, it's hard to even pizza, call right? yourself. I mean, like, I cook it. I cook our squares in a Lloyd pan, and like, there's a cheese crust. So I don't know if that like is considered. Well, that, uh, a Detroit, but like that's yeah. where like the names come into like what what is some after you've created your own thing, what does it fucking matter? Uh, yeah, you know, like I'm doing sourdough in a Detroit pan with a cheese crust. Is that Detroit style pizza? I don't know. I do want to say about the VPN stuff, like and Neapolitan pizza. I think the the beauty the beauty of all of that, like the romance of like making pizza, like is that they they do keep things very simple. I mm -hmm. think in, in mm -hmm. so many ways that is that is the smartest thing to do. And and living in kind of those guidelines yeah. is a very smart thing. Well, to do. the VPN thing also comes with a, a um a philosophy of working. It doesn't just come with the regulation. They're not gonna force you to do things, you know. It has to respect certain rules, but it comes with a philosophy of you're supposed to taste the dough, mm -hmm. the sauce, mm -hmm. and the topping. Yes. Right. Each bite should have a little bit of each chopping. And that's yes. how we train our staff too. I mean, if you take a bite, there's only olives on it, or uh, or, or a kalamata olive, or or there's only ham, then you're not tasting the whole pizza. You should have a little bit of everything everywhere, and not in an enormous amount. And like, for example, if somebody take olives, if you put too much olive, then that's not good, right? So yeah. it needs to. They need to. You need to have that conscious of like they need to balance each other. And you need to still be able to taste the sauce and the, and the dough. And, you know, from there, it's it's the same thing with the New York style, which originally came from the yeah. same place. It's like when you look at New York style, a lot of people will make, when they start to make New York style pizza and they put a lot of cheese on it. It's They like the gooey aspect of it. That's not New York style. It's not supposed to be. You're, you taste the sauce, you taste the dough, and you taste the cheese. Yeah. That's, it it's simple. Hold and fold it. And it's simple. Yeah. New York style pizza is very simple. It came from the same way, right? Yeah. Then people started like fucking it up and like putting like a load of cheese, peppers, onions, ham, like the deluxe and, or supreme pizza. Like whoever made that. Uh, I call well, that pizza a garbage can. I don't know if you have. Uh, give me the give me the one with all the toppings. Yeah. But that's what people want, you know. What with I a mean? crumble like, sausage yeah, and like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you. Uh, I did want to know this. You opened September 16, twenty fourteen, right? August. Was that yeah. August. Yeah. August fourteenth. Yeah. You gave out free pizza that day. First day. Oh no, we did September, September fourteenth. Yeah, a month later. Okay, a month, a month later. later you did yeah. it okay, I saw the line. How shitty was that? And would you ever do it again? Uh, we, okay. The first reason, the first year we've done it, it was amazing. There was a lineup for like eight hours straight, seriously, like two blocks. I know. It was like, people were like, it gave this me anxiety. is amazing. 
yeah, my landlord was blown away. I was like, what the hell? This is great. And it was, it was not a hard. It was not a hard because we had a lineup concept. People were lining up down the counter. We were serving them their pizza. They were leaving, sitting down, eating. So it was really a constant flow of pizza just being cooked and served. That's all it was for eight hours nonstop. I didn't do it after because everybody started doing it. And that's just usually, free pizza away. yeah. So everybody started doing, and they started doing, we're doing free pizza and then people would show up and they would give like a slice. Like we were giving a free, you know, that was the whole idea. Like you giving free pizza. So after that, I stopped doing it. I was like, you know, it's no longer new. We've done it and everybody's doing it. I, I don't want to do it anymore. It's not fun, you know? So but we it stopped was doing it. it. It was great. It was great. I actually, didn't know if anyone would show up actually. Oh, we were like, we, we were didn't, like, well, we didn't know. Free pizza? Yeah. Like, holy shit. Dude. We didn't know, but we advertised it. We did it twice, I think. I think we did it twice. And then it became a thing where people were giving free pizza slice. And I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, and, and it was great. And we would advertise it just to, we, that one. We advertised it like a month before we put a little table tent that says like free pizza on that day. From, yeah. We said from five to seven or three, from three to seven, we ended up being open until like 12 in the morning, I think uh, at night. Uh, because it was, I, I had to go, I was so scary because we didn't know how to handle that. We were new in the business. We don't know security wise what to do. There's a lineup down the block that turns the corner, go down the other side. And it's nonstop. And then the neighbor is like, dude, you're blocking my road, my, my, my door. And like, we're lucky there's not too many. Um, but then eventually they embraced it. They came out with speaker that started pumping music for us. And it was like pretty cool. And then I had to go out and give a lot. I must have given like 700 coupon of free pizza. And I would tell people, you guys, if you don't want to wait because it's long, you can come back anytime this week or next week, we'll honor the coupon, right? So then people would leave the line, but it would keep coming more. So it was like, it was a handless thing. It was very exciting, stressful, but exciting, yeah. How and much, it was how the much best thing think, to train your staff to, by the way. Um, <laughs> how much do you think it cost you? Oh, not much, not much. I mean, it was just making cheese pizza, margarita, right? That's like, if you take the cost of a pizza back then, it was not like today, it was like less. So I don't know, like a thousand, maybe $3,000, $2,000, okay. like not that much, right? The well, I mean, cost, that's a fair right? amount. That's, that's a lot of money to me. Two thousand bucks, but for the for the impact that we had, that so, was crazy. So people had, people get had to so, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. This was in the early days of Instagram. Too. Yeah, yeah, it was this the was early like, days. Yeah, you know. So did you? So you saw a growth in your in your social media? Oh yeah, okay, huge, huge, huge. Was it worth it? I'm not sure because over time, then you know, people are following you. Are they really following you? Or they just follow you for that pizza and they're not looking anymore? It's like it's hard to tell, right? Um, but 10 years ago, almost 11 years ago, we, 10 years ago, yeah, we, we, I mean, that was a good thing for us to get known, that's for sure, because everybody who follow us told their friends and like, you know, so at the end of the day, it kickstarted our business real fast, right from the start. For it us, was like yeah. a different time. Like if you were to do that now, I don't think people would care. I stopped doing it oh, because I think, now I, I think feel they, like- I think 100% <laughs> they would. I think that line would be twice as long, especially with, really? in, with Instagram. I was offered not long ago by a company, well, uh, Skip the Dish. They were, they were offering us to do some sort of promotion with them. I know Skip them. the Dish. Yeah? yeah? Okay. So they were offering <laughs> us to do a promotion with them where we would do that kind of thing. And I didn't want to do it. Um, I'm still thinking about it. It's not like, I'm not against the idea. You know, I'm not against it. It's, I feel like it's been done, you know, like, I, like I said, I'm a concept guy. I love, I'm passionate. I'm really passionate yeah. and doing things over and over again. And like, I don't know, man. And does it's it like, translate to like actual sales, sales, yeah. and loyal customers? But that could be, but more the perspective I'm looking at it is like, are my, am I giving something to those customers that are going to be really beneficial to them as well? It's like just getting it for pizza is one thing. Um, but am I giving them something where they're going to discover a new product where they're going to be, I would much rather give them like a free Mortaza, which is brand new, like new, new, new thing, make it a little bit different. Right. Um, I don't know. I'm debating myself all the time on those things. I don't know if it's, can you talk about, uh, one of your worst experiences you've ever had dealing with a customer? Yeah. yeah. I never realized that there was all kind of people out there. I really thought everybody was smart. Everybody was <laughs> have common sense. I really, I was really naive. I was probably one and I'm oh. probably one of them. That's the scariest part. Yes. It's like, you realize you're probably thinking you're way smarter than you are. Yeah. And you're like living in this world and you're making all those stupid move and you think they're smart move, but they're not. Yeah. And it really humbles you out. You're like, wow, there's people like, and then, and then the way to adapt to this, I think was to realize that you have to accept it. 
And maybe that person lost her mother this morning. Maybe she just got into a fight with somebody. Yeah. And maybe you're just that thing that's going to make her go through her day. And we had this comment. People coming in and be like, you know what, guys? This is the best part of my day coming here today. Mm -hmm. And it almost made me feel emotional because like we had those comments. People saying this was the best time I had today. I, their life sucks. Yeah. They're going through shit. Not everybody's waking up in the morning at six going for 30 kilometers run and having a joyful life. That's not how it works, right? Sometimes you have dark clouds and, and we, we as the industry are living with that. We're receiving that. Yeah, and you, we're trying to give energy. love and happiness and atmosphere. Like, hey, welcome, guys. Like, it's so nice to see you again. You, know, like, you don't know, but something wrong with that guy this morning. But we've had people stealing, like back in the time when we had our yogurt shop, people were stealing spoon in the topping counter, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, just and, grabbing stuff and just eating it with their bare oh, hands. Oh, there's that great <laughs> grabbing stuff, eating with their bare hand from the counter. That was the, in the yogurt uh, time. In, in the pizza time, we decorated the store when we opened with a bunch of plants and everything that got stolen. Basil, yeah. Right? People steal them just for fun. They don't really like have any reason. They just steal them. Um, and you got, of course, people that you know, think that you're doing things wrong, that your basil should be underneath and not on top because, you know, Parmesan should not be on your pizzas. Like, you know, there's all these kind of things, but these are tastes more than anything else. And I've got some passport whipped at me and be like, hey, I'm from Italy. The guy opened his passport. I'm like, okay. It's like, you should put your basil at the bottom. I'm like, the police were here. You know, and then all, and don't put olive oil in your tomato. Well, I was like, well, it releases a lycopene. Is lycopene an English word? I don't even lycopen know. Lycopene is like a product that comes from the tomatoes, right? You put it in your oven, with, you put this, the olive oil with your tomato, it releases those good things from the tomatoes yeah. in, in a high heat. Um, so now you're starting having this conversation with a, <laughs> with a customer. It, it, it's handless, you know, it's frustrating. Yeah, it's a losing conversation. And it's frustrating too, yeah. you know, like saying, all right, how come, uh, you know, I don't know, I mean, there's so many things. And Montreal is by itself a very welcoming city. People are really warm, very happy, very nice. Um, so we don't have like this rough hedge customer service that might trigger some, yeah. uh, you know, some of those arguments. Do you have anything? Uh, did you have anything? Like, like the worst? Like downtown, we have to deal with drug. You know, that's one of the biggest problems. Like uh, drug addict in the back alley. Yeah. Bloods in the back alley, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like this. Yeah, the um, blanket full of blood. That was pretty gross. Yeah. <laughs> blanket full of blood. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah. Oh, somebody somebody accused Grace of stealing her pizza. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. She actually made me cry. Want to tell that story? Yeah. Yeah, good one. Yeah, she, she wanted me to reheat it, so I did. And then she accused me of eating it and taking a bite out of it. And it was like... And we have an open no, kitchen. Like, everybody can see everything we do, pizza. right? There's not yeah. even, like, it's no wall, nothing. It's, like, literally, she took the pizza, put it back in the oven, brought it back to the lady. Yeah, but like you said, maybe... And she, she said, you ate my pizza. Chris was like, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, she, actually she had a bad day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, was there a bite out of her pizza? I, I wasn't. I was, like, arguing about but it. But I guess she was probably eating it before she asked yeah, for and, to reheat it. Yeah, and then it was like, can you reheat yeah, this? Yeah. I think yeah. I think the pizza was delivered to her. She was talking, eating, and it, like, yeah. talking too yeah. much, and it got cold. And she yeah, said, can she you reheat it? It's so matter of fact. And when it customer. came down, I guess she forgot that she ate that much, I or was, she assumed that some. But, you know, it's. But, you know, 99%. If everybody's awesome and there's yes, that one percent. Of, of course. You guys have three kids. Are they do they have any I know their ages are 10, 12, 16. 10, 12, yeah, 16. Yeah, yeah. What do, what's their relationship to the service industry? Do they ever come in? Are they interested? Do well, they care? Most of them don't want to eat pizza anymore. Yeah. They're done. It's like when we travel, we eat like 13 pizza a day. It's like ridiculous. It's like yesterday I had five dinner. Uh and now it include pasta, so it's even worse. <laughs> so they don't eat pizza. The service industry, I think they are really good with, with people. They understand what we're doing. Uh, I think they're start. I think the oldest one is starting to understand right now what we're doing, what we're achieving. Like we have a good reputation in Montreal. People knows us as the people from Brigade. Like they knew us before as the yogurt people. We, we're known, so they know us in the industry. And, and we're building this business together as a couple. Like it's, it, this is the hardest part, right? So it's like, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, we're always together, me and her, always. So um, so the kids see us working through that, like having those little arguments, like Papa and Mama are having arguments. Oh, but like, oh, Mama and Papa can also figure out how to fix their problem. Like the, the deal is not to have a fight in front of your children, it's to show them that you can resolve those problems, like of an course. adult, yeah. right? So if they see you fighting as big as the fight can be, eventually they're like, yeah, Papa and Mama got into a fight for the business again, 
and because it happens, right? And 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 and, and Papa went for a walk, and now look, they're fixing it. So they're solving problem. They realize that sometimes you have hard, hard patch, and but we are showing them the beneficial part of it, right? I can be there in the morning, bring you to school. Mm -hmm. uh, you call me, you need something from school. I'll be there at eleven, right mm -hmm. there. Um, you know, so we're, we're we're going for vacation for like two weeks. There, uh, we have more free time than than more parents would do, I guess, right? Yeah. But then at the same time, we're not there Friday night. Like we have this dynamic, I think that. Well, the fact that we're still together after ten years of opening a pizzeria, Says I a think lot. it. I think it's a testament to like maybe. Well, two businesses, seventeen years together, three children. It's yeah. Does I mean, it say that we're yeah. just sadomasochistic or something i don't know <laughs> no no i think we found a good balance I mean, you where... must have understanding of like compromise and like and coming together like i always i always should i wait till they're gone i always, i'm always interested in you know husband and wife or couples that uh, like open up a business because and and they do it together because so much of your time is already spent with each other and then like how do you how do you separate business and personal oh gosh, we're still trying to figure that out you know and 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 keep a like healthy work-life balance is I don't your wife think my my wife has this? her own career okay she does uh i you know i think at, at one point if we if we could afford to to pay her what she was worth i would bring her in but i think that that i think we both think that that would cause huge problems because we're both control freaks yeah um, i think we both have mental <laughs> no, incapacity at some point <laughs> I think we're probably like some sort of like on the spectrum or some weird, like I am, I know I am, yeah. I have some quirks and, I'm you know, like just way. last week, just last week I walked into my restaurants and then somebody like texted me later and be like, Hey, you did not even acknowledge that I was there. You didn't say hi. Yeah. And to me, it never occurred to me. It was like, it was not mean. It was not like I'm in my own world. I have three things to do. I'm doing them. I don't want to notice who's there. I don't, I can actually talk to you and just walk away in the middle of a sentence. And not even know that I, I, and later on think about it, like, did I finish my? Yeah, so that's why I do that all the I time. I go there. Weird, I think, yeah, I do that. All. I think that's like ADHD. Maybe. Yo, and, yeah. it, and it roughs some people up. They're like, I think there's a lot of weird, restaurant. You know? I think there's a lot of restaurateurs that are like, they're, they have that attention deficit disorder where your Absolutely. mind's a thousand different places, but it can be in one place. Like after 17 years, there's stuff that she does now that I, I'm like, okay, I know where she's coming. She's with triggered. It. It's right midnight. Now. It's midnight. And she goes like, you know, in the bank account, uh, I have to pay this, 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 and I don't know if we're gonna make payroll next week. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, it's right, midnight. Right what are you talking about? <laughs> right? And it's like, oh gosh. Oh. And that then so and so is probably not gonna show up. But this is all drama. It's not really happening. In real world, it doesn't happen. The day after we wake I'm up distressed. and she goes like, Oh, you know what? By the way, that person is being replaced, it's fine. And then I forgot I had the check, so now it's deposit, so payroll's good. It's like <laughs> it's like a trigger it's like a little like yeah mm. so but every relationship is like that every couple is like that so now i'm just learning this pattern and i know it so it doesn't work anymore i just go sleep somewhere else well what are you more <laughs> analytical do you worry more than i i do oh yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah because there there has to be a balance there's got to be the person that's like oh no we're going to be fine and then the person's like hey no we're not going to be fine that's a gift you, we don't you, know <laughs> and we don't care. Yeah. No, it's a gift. I'm telling you. It's this oh, wait, stupidity is, that we have. Yes, well, you got to be stupid to be in we this business. We do have that stupidity where if anything that I have to go back, if I go, were to go back in time and I would tell myself is that at the end of the day, everything works out, just pursue it, keep going. Because the person that's going to succeed is not the one that's going to have the best shit, is the one who's never going to give up. And I, we have that thing. So ignorance is bliss because we never give up and we keep doing it and we keep pushing and we don't mind changing things. And at the end of the day, just things work out for some reason. It, it's just the way it is. And, and the fact is, I, I think it's, I don't think it's work out. I think you accept it. And if it doesn't work out, we're probably just going to do something else and we'll feel like, oh, see, it worked out at the end. So yeah. it always work out anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's what it is, right? I mean, I wish somebody told me back then that, because I remember having a friend who was developing, like he was doing like a real estate development things. And then he was dealing with like a lot of problems. It was really hard for him. I was like, I don't understand how you do it, man. I would freak out. And over time, you know, our rents in Montreal is like in, in close to 20 grand a month. It's mm -hmm. very stressful, payroll, high, like high, like Gosh. velocity. A yeah. lot of people coming in through and out and like all the deal, the problem, you become numb to it mm -hmm. because you realize that you, Nothing is going to happen. That's great advice. And that was also going to be my last question. What would you tell yourself? 
And it is. Matt says it all the time to me. It's just about showing up. About yeah, showing it is. Up. It actually is. If you look at the world, it's not always the, my brother is so freaking smart. My oldest brother, he's genius. He's talented. He's painting, drawing. He's like literally is so smart. But then he doesn't persevere in what he's doing. And, and he's got great quality. But I'm not as smart as he is, but I never give up. And at the end of the day, that makes me move forward, right? I, no, my brother's going to hate me now. <laughs> yeah. gonna- well, one last person <laughs> to, 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 to cancel Joe, I love is, you. is now Joe, your brother. Joe? We, yeah. Joe? Jonathan, yeah. We love you. We love you, Joe. Yeah. Love you a lot. Yeah. I miss him a lot. Yeah. All right. Final question. Who is the best artist of all time or the greatest band of all time? Greatest artist or band of all time? Just yeah, the, I think I'm going to leave it to Grace because like... Oh, you got to answer. Everyone's yeah, got to answer. answer. That's, oh, well, the, that's but, the deal. Uh, yeah, Rizumi is like, you know, I, I, it goes from Cowboy Fringant, which is a French Quebecer band, to like, like right now I'm listening to like... Um, You're listening to a lot of country these days. Yeah, country music <laughs> right now. Hell yeah, what do we got? Yeah, why, Rest in why peace, Toby Flores, Keith, Jelly? by the way. Jelly Rest in rolls, peace to a legend. White Flores, Jelly Rolls, like that's what I'm listening to. But I love Beastie Boy. I love like, you know, uh, Led Zeppelin, like... Uh, and no FX, you know, no FX, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black wagon. Did yeah, you, this? you just hit me with the, the gambit there. Mm-hmm, I love <laughs> this bar. Uh, all right, Grace. Me? Yes. Oh gosh, I'm like one of those old people that listen to their music of their youth. You know, The Cure. Yes. Disintegration. Oh. Joy Division, maybe. Perfect. I don't think we've gotten a lot of new wave. Yeah. 80s bands, The Cure and Joy Division. I'm the two oldest of my person favorites. probably on the show. Yeah. No, <laughs> get out of here. Disorder is like the best song ever. There it is. What was your band? You had a band, right? You still have a band? I had. I was in a band called Lex Condon. Check them out on Spotify. <laughs> and there Frogtown. And still going or? No, no, no. no. I get, I pull all the creative juices that I have in my life or that go into this. Pizza and working with Matt. So it's there's good. a lot of, there's a, I always say there's a lot of similarities in running a pizzeria as there was being in the music industry. A lot of pain and struggle. It's, it's luck, right time, right time. Like, like you can, you could make the best music and still never be heard of, you know? Mm-hmm. And a lot of, like, if you stop showing up, you know, if you, if you stop believing in yourself. But I think that you, you continue to push out great product and, Keep waking up every day. And what to say, like it's an overnight success that 10 years in a build out or something exactly. like that. Exactly. That's right? what it is. People you don't know, see is, it. Yeah. You know? like, no, hey. no, one's, no one sees the hard work, right? No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. yeah exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Well, thanks for I having I had us. such a good time talking to y'all. And sorry I talk a lot. Um, I wish Grace talked more, but I have a big mouth. I'm the talker, I guess. Uh, apparently, <laughs> we, could have, we could have done a. We could have done a Matt's gonna have a hard. We probably could have gone another up. hour. Yeah, like, it's a five-hour <laughs> podcast. I gotta cut it down. Oh my god! I don't know. It won't be that bad. Uh, where do we go to check you out? So, no. What's your Instagram? Your website? Brigade Pizza. Yeah, yeah. BrigadePizza.com. Brigade at Brigade Pizza on TikTok, on YouTube. On. All right. Thank you. Thanks for having us, guys. Um,